The Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. That whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's time for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, rated tops in popularity for a longer period of time than any other West Coast program in radio history. And Signal Gasoline is tops, too. Tops in quality. It takes extra quality, you know, to give you extra mileage. And Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. So look for the Signal Circle sign in yellow and black that identifies friendly dealer-owned Signal stations from Canada to Mexico. And now, the Whistler's strange story. Silent Partner. For 20 out of every 24 hours, Saunders Junction is a sleepy little western town, the railhead of a dairy cattle empire called the Robertson Ranch. But twice a day at 6 o'clock in the morning and evening, it comes to life, its three blocks of stores and supply houses suddenly active as the trains pull into the station and Robertson trucks line the platform, the drivers and swampers hustling hundreds of gleaming cans of Robertson milk into the waiting cars to be taken south to the cities. In the wintertime, a stranger in Saunders Junction would have trouble distinguishing morning from evening. The same trains, the same shouting men, the same darkness morning and evening. But Matt Robertson was no stranger. As he stood on the platform watching the train pull out, he was thinking, a little bitterly now, of the day 30 years ago when his father passed the Robertson Ranch over to him. And as he looked down the line of trucks with Robertson painted on their sides, he couldn't help reflecting on the changes those 30 years had brought. Okay, boys, let's roll. Barry. Oh, Barry. Yeah. Just a minute. Did you check that shipment on, Barry? Well, sure. What's the matter, Matt? Let's look at the sheets. I didn't see them. Oh, well, I didn't think you wanted I got a right to know how much milk I'm shipping off my own ranch, haven't I, Barry? Come on, give me the sheets. Oh, sure, Matt. It's, uh, well, it's just that Wilkes... Never uh, mind, Wilk. Oh, okay, Matt. Hmm. More than 3,000 gallons, eh? 10% over last month. Yeah. Wilk is doing a great job. You think so, Barry? Yeah, sure do. And 3,000 ain't nothing to what we're going to do when Santa Susanna gets going. I haven't decided yet whether we're going to buy Santa Susanna Ranch. Oh, it's all bought yesterday. Where did you hear that? Oh, Will Keynes himself. Yeah, we're going to double milk production, he says. He went ahead and bought it? Why, I, I thought you knew. Will went ahead. Went right ahead and bought it. Oh, funny he didn't say nothing to you. You're his partner and everything. Oh, I can't figure Just why... Just forget it, Barry. I'll take it up with him directly. Well, sure, Matt, sure. I, uh, I better get back. I got to get these sheets to the boss. The boss, huh? Look, Barry, before you get in that truck, take a look at the name on the side of it. Huh? It says Robertson Ranch. You see it? Big, clear, bright yellow letters. Robertson Ranch. <laughs> Robertson Ranch. Oh, Matt. Hey? I... Oh, hello, Sheriff. Thought I might ride back to the ranch with you, Matt, if it ain't too much trouble. Oh? Anything wrong, Sheriff? I want to see young Charlie Breck. Charlie? What's the matter? What's he been... Oh, now, don't get worked up, Matt. It's nothing serious. You know, he's been on probation after that shooting scrape up north. He just ain't reported to me this month like he's supposed to, that's all. Oh, I see. Can't say I blame him for putting that fellow in the hospital, but the book says he checks with me once a month. 
And that's what he better do. Well, look, Sheriff, uh, I'll send him in tomorrow. Tomorrow? He'll be working stock all day if I know his boss. Will Keynes will have every hand on the place moving cattle over at the Santa Susana place he just bought. Oh. You heard about that, too, huh? Sure. Yesterday. It was all over town. Uh, what's the matter, Matt? Something wrong? You know, Sheriff, it's nice having a partner who takes care of everything. Yeah. Will Keynes is a mighty capable fella. Yeah, you sure picked a winner when you took him in ten years ago. Oh, uh, that's your car down there, isn't it? Yeah. All right, Sheriff, let's go. It's ten miles from town to the main ranch house. You know every bump, every rabbit on the winding dirt road, Matt. And as you guide the car through the night, you can see in your mind the vast stretches of pasture land on either side, the cottonwood thickets, the oak-covered hills, all part of an empire that once was yours. All of it, 27,000 acres of the best land in the state. As usual, there's a light on in Wilkes' office down by the gate when you arrive. For an hour after train time, morning or night, Will Keynes always works alone over his reports. Wait a minute. And then as you reach the door, the sheriff grabs your arm. Sounds like Charlie. Maybe we better wait. Oh, please, Wilk, listen to you us. You listen to me. I don't give a hang what you think or Dorothy thinks either, for that matter. You've got to think of her, Wilk. She's not a kid anymore. She's a grown woman with a mind of her own. It's her business. Well, I'm making it my business. Get that? Dorothy is my daughter, and if you think I'm going to allow her to run around with a jailbird... Hey, wait a minute, Wilk. I think we better go in, Matt. Kind of talk I want to hear. Oh, Nobody... excuse us, gents. Didn't mean to butt in. Get him out of here, Sheriff. He threatened me. I know, Wilk. Couldn't help hearing it outside the door. What's the matter, Charlie? Just a little private argument, that's all. I'll tell you, Sheriff. He's been seeing my daughter, Dorothy, and I don't intend to let it go on. I think we can settle that without the sheriff, Will. Whether you know it or not, Sonny, it's settled already. Uh, come on, Charlie. I'd like to talk to you for a minute. Oh, excuse us, uh, will you, boys? I'll uh, see you later about that, Wilk. Well, what do you want? Oh, I'm just another hired hand, Wilk, trying to find out what's going on around here. I suppose you're a little curious about Santa Susana. You're a wonder, Wilk. By George, a seven-day wonder. You can skip the sarcasm, Matt. I've thought a lot about this, you and me. I finally worked out a way of operating that fits. It doesn't include you. Well... I got Santa Susana at a good price. I'm going to make money with it. There was no reason to dilly-dally any further. That's all. I see. You know, it's funny. I thought we had a partnership. You can look at that any way you want. I'm running the ranch the way I want to run it. The, uh, Robertson Ranch. I'll change that, too, one of these well, days. Well, you low-down, double-crossing skunk. If I'd have known you were going to... Wait a minute, Matt. I'm glad you mentioned that point. You seem to have forgotten now that when you took me in, the whole spread was two jumps from receivership. If it hadn't been for me, there'd be nothing left. 14,000 acres. They were only 1,500 head. Poorest kind of stock the Lord ever made. We've come a long way since then, Matt, and we're going a long ways further. If you want to come along, that's fine. If you want to sell out, that's better yet. Uh, you can think it over on your way to Santa Susana tonight. Santa Susana? We're moving all our dry stock over there tomorrow to put on that rich pasture. They'll need you. Is that all, boss? Yeah, that's all. Oh, Charlie. Hello, Matt. You... you waiting for me? Yeah. I want to tell you I'm leaving. Leaving what? The ranch. Oh, now, wait a minute, Charlie. I've had about all I can take, Matt. I don't want any more. Uh, I know what you mean. It's making it hard for her, too. Dorothy? Yeah. I'd be forcing her to make a choice, Matt. It's not right to make her choose between me and her father. I'm not going to tell anyone who's going to climb on the 6 o'clock train tomorrow night and get out of here. He thinks I'm a criminal. A killer. Well, maybe they're right. If I... If I had a gun a few minutes ago, I'd... I could kill him, Matt. He could kill him, Matt. Yes, he feels the same way about Will Keynes as you do. He could kill Will Keynes, too, and everybody knows it. Even the sheriff after their quarrel tonight. Suddenly, you see your special partnership agreement with Will Keynes. The bold black letters of the survivorship clause that will make Robertson Ranch all yours again in the event of his death. 
If Wilk were found dead, if Charlie Breck were picked up fleeing the scene on the six o'clock southbound just after the crime, then, Matt, the yellow lettering on the trucks, Robertson Ranch, would mean again exactly what it said. Charlie, you... You uh, say you aren't telling anyone you're leaving? I can't. The sheriff would keep me here because of my probation. Still three months to go. What about Dorothy? See her tomorrow. Where is she, Charlie? Up at North Ranch. You, uh... You going to tell her? No. I'll write her a letter from New Orleans or somewhere, that's all. But aren't you afraid if you see her, she'll guess something's wrong? No, I told you I won't tell her anything. Just want to see her once more, that's all. Charlie, I... I think you're right. No use making a big fuss about it. I've been thinking about it for a long time now, Matt. It's best for her. She'll forget me in time. That... That Bill Ashford over there is a mighty nice fellow. Tell you what, Charlie. I'm going over to Santa Susana tonight. I'll stop at North Ranch on the way. I'll, I'll tell her you'll be over. Oh, gee, thanks, Matt. Uh, Charlie. Yeah? If you decided to keep this under your hat, why did you tell me? Well, I wanted someone to know. I guess I just trust you, Matt. I, I figured you wouldn't say anything. You're right, Charlie. I won't say a word to anyone. <laughs> With the prologue of Silent Partner, the Signal Oil Company is bringing you another strange story by The Whistler. Recognize that noise? That was the breaking of a perfectly good New Year's resolution made only two weeks ago. (laughs) There's one resolution, however, that I do hope you won't break. The resolution to try... Just try signal gasoline in your car. Because seriously, friends, there are real advantages for the driver who powers his car with signal. Not only because signal is the famous go-farther gasoline, but also because of what makes signal's good mileage possible. I'm talking about the extra efficiency today's signal gasoline gets from your motor, which naturally gives you quicker starting, faster pickup, smoother, knock-free power the superior kind of performance you expect of a superior quality gasoline. Yes, it's a fact. The same features a gasoline must have for extra driving pleasure also give you extra mileage, the thing Signal Gasoline is famous for. That's why we say to be sure of the tops in gasoline quality. There are just two things to remember. One, in gasoline it takes extra quality to go farther. And two... Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. And now back to the whistler. The plan is clear now, isn't it, Matt? Will Keynes is going to be out of your way for good, and young Charlie Breck will be blamed. Driving over to the Santa Susana, the whole thing runs through your mind. You can almost see it working out. Hear the sheriff's questions after Wilk has been found dead. Kind of sudden the way you decided to leave town, wasn't it, Charlie? It wasn't as sudden as it seemed. I told Matt I was going. I'm sorry, Charlie, but you're mistaken about that. Well, of course I told you that day after my argument with Wilk. That wasn't your last argument with him, was it, Charlie? You went back again and shot him. No, no, I didn't. Matt, tell him. I'd like to help you, Charlie, but, well, Wilk was my partner. I have to think of him, too. Yes, Matt, it'll be that simple. You're confident as you pull up in front of North Ranch House and go inside to talk to Dorothy. Matt, hello. What brings you over here this time of night? Well, for one thing, I promised Charlie I'd deliver a message to you, Dorothy. Oh, how is he? Oh, he's all right. Uh, Kind of a hot-headed young fellow, but... You know, if people would just make an effort to understand, Charlie... You're talking about Dad, aren't you? Well, I... Please, Matt. He and Charlie have quarreled again, haven't they? (laughs) Dorothy, you know I don't like to go mixing in the things. Tell me, Matt. 
Well, yes, they did. It was sort of a showdown, I guess. Each calling the other names and all. They stopped when Sheriff Walker and I came in on them. I see. Matt, do you mind if I ride back with you? Oh, I... I wouldn't do that. But I want to see Charlie. I want to talk to him. But he's going to meet you uh, tomorrow, Dorothy. That's what he wanted me to tell you. He's coming over here? No, uh, not here. He wants to meet you in town uh, about one o'clock. In town? But he usually comes here. Well, I I guess he figured it would be best that way. Because of Dad? I suppose. Well, I'll have to get someone to drive me in. Maybe Bill Ashford will do it. Oh, good. I'll tell Charlie when I get back. Thanks, Matt. I... I wish Dad could be as understanding as you are. You have to lie, Matt, to send Dorothy into town when Charlie will be looking for her at the North Ranch. Above all, you can't take the chance of having them meet. Of course, you know they'll be questioned later on when Sheriff Walker is investigating. But you can always say you lied to prevent more trouble. That's a good excuse, Matt. And all through the night as you're giving orders to the hands, you're thinking it through. But in the morning when you meet Charlie back at your place, you find there's something else to think about. Matt, I, I know you'll think I'm screwy changing my mind, but I've got to tell Dorothy about leaving. It don't seem right to just run off. That won't make it any easier on her, Charlie. I know, but well, I didn't sleep last night thinking about it. I feel that I should tell her. Uh, I think your first hunch was best. I didn't ask what you think. I'm telling her, and it's none of your business. Oh, I'm sorry, Matt. Forget it. I, I'm all mixed up. Sure, kid. I understand. But you should know. I'm going to have one of the boys tell her to meet me in town just before train time tonight. Uh, why don't you ride over and tell her yourself, Charlie, as long as she's expecting you? Oh, no, they got everybody over at Santa Susana moving stock. I'm holding down the fort here alone. Does it matter if you're quitting? Uh, you know, Wilk, my work isn't done. He'll start wondering about it and maybe get suspicious. Oh, sure, the sheriff. Yeah. Not that Wilk wouldn't be glad to see me leave. But the sheriff won't. I want things to look usual right up till the time I climb under that six o'clock train. Hmm. Seems a shame you'll just get to see Dorothy for a minute. Hey, look. Maybe I can help out. You don't mean you'll work for me. <laughs> Why not? Well, after being up all night handling your own shift, why, that's no good. You're worn out already. Oh, well, I'm not so tired I can't do a friend a favor, Charlie. Yeah, but, man... Go on. Get over to North Ranch and talk to her. Oh, gee, I sure appreciate this, man. Forget it, forget it. Oh, uh, I wouldn't take the station wagon. Foreman might check on you. Oh, I won't. I'll just saddle up. I can be there this afternoon. Swell. I'll leave right away if you want it, Charlie. And don't worry. I'll be taking care of things for you here. And it's a deadly eight hours you spend taking Charlie's shift at the main ranch after that long night of work at Santa Susana. By two in the afternoon, there's a weary throb at the base of your brain, an ache in your back, a gritty heaviness in your eyelids. But you manage to stick it out somehow, and late that afternoon, you drag up the stairs of the ranch house, down the hall to Charlie's room. He's angrily throwing his things into a suitcase when you open the door. Hey, say, what's wrong, Charlie? Huh? You and Dorothy have words or something? Oh, hello, Matt. No, I didn't see you. But I thought you... Look, Matt, I appreciate you taking my place and all, but I just soon not talk about today. Whatever you say, Charlie. I'm sorry, Matt. You might as well know. She, uh... She wasn't at the ranch when I got there. Wasn't there? That's right. Hadn't left a message or anything. When I got inquiring around, one of the boys said he saw her drive off for town with Bill Ashford. What? Why, but, but that isn't like Dorothy. I, I'm sure I'm she I'm sure must... she'd been listening to her father. Probably swung over to seeing things his way. Anyway, it don't make no difference. I'm leaving. On the six o'clock, just like I said. Well, good luck to you, Charlie. Thanks, Matt. You've been swell. It's one thing I won't forget about Saunders Junction. And listen, if, uh, if I can ever do anything for you... Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Well, uh, uh, I'm going up to my room and stretch out for a little while, Charlie. 
You know, I'm kind of tired after 48 hours. <laughs> so long, kid. So long, man. And thanks for all you've done. You leave Charlie and go up to your room. You can hear him finishing his packing and you sit down on the edge of the bed. Let your shoes drop to the floor so he'll hear them. Then you lean back to relax for a few minutes. Close your eyes and think it all through again. When you sit up and glance outside, it's already dark. The clock on your bureau says 5.30. The time is just right for what you have to do. And as usual at this hour, the light is on and Will Keynes is working alone in his office down by the gate. Come in. Oh, hello, Matt. What's on your mind? I suppose you know Charlie Breck left. Yeah, good riddance. If I'd have known in time, I'd have sent a brass band down to the depot. I don't think Dorothy would agree with you. Oh, Dorothy will forget him in a week. I'm not so sure. I didn't come in here to discuss that. Look, I'm busy trying to hurry through this stuff. If you don't mind... But I do mind, Wilk. I mind everything you've done. I don't want to get on that again. I've told you what you can do. Sure. Just like you told Charlie. Only it's different with me, Wilk. I'm not running out. I'm staying. What are you talking about? I invited you to stay or go or do whatever you please. I think that last is more to my liking, Wilk. I want to do whatever I please with the Robertson Ranch. Just like in the old days. That's why I brought this along. Matt, are you crazy? Don't point that thing at me. Sit down, Wilk. You're not going anywhere. What are you thinking of, Matt? You'll never get away with this. There's a survivorship clause in our partnership agreement, Wilk. I think it'll make things pretty simple. Matt, you fool. You'll hang. Oh, no, Wilk, no. I'll give you the satisfaction of knowing that you even took care of that for me. When you drove Charlie Breck to the breaking point. But I He didn't killed that. you and ran out. No, Matt. It's that clear cut, Wilk. No, Matt, No! <laughs> Sheriff Walker. Uh, speaking. Uh, that you, Matt? Yes, yes. I, I'm calling from the ranch. Will Keynes has been murdered. Uh, what did you say? My partner, Will Keynes. He and Charlie Breck had another fight. I got here too late to stop him. Charlie Breck? He, he shot Will? Yes, th that's right. Uh, look, Sheriff, I'm going after Charlie. I'll contact you as soon as I catch up to him. Uh, good, but be careful, Matt. And call in the minute you're locating. Right, Sheriff. Twenty minutes later, you're in the station wagon, the headlights cutting through the darkness. The clock on the dash shows almost six as you reach the depot, just as the train is pulling out. Ed! Ed, just a minute. Wait. Don't close that window. Huh? Oh, Matt. Oh, say, you don't want to take it out of here, No, too. Ed, no, no, no. I, I'm trying to catch Charlie Breck. Charlie? Oh, you're a little late, Matt. You missed but him. But he... He did leave? Yeah, he sure did. I see. Ed, I wonder if I could use the phone. I want to call the sheriff. Whistler will return in just a moment with a strange ending to tonight's story. Meantime, for you drivers who are not already enjoying the convenience of a signal credit card, I'd like to mention just a few of the ways in which this simplified modern method of taking care of your driving needs can add to your driving pleasure. With a signal credit card, instead of paying cash each time you buy signal gasoline or lubricants, you just say charge it. Then at the end of the month, you merely send Signal Oil Company a check to cover your month's purchases, just as you now take care of your telephone, electric, or department store bills. This gives you a handy record of what it costs to run your car. And on trips, 
It eliminates the necessity of carrying large sums of money for driving expenses and possible emergencies. For signal credit cards are honored at all signal service stations, almost 2,000 of them, throughout the Pacific Coast states from Canada to Mexico. To add to this convenience to your driving, here's all you do. Just stop by your nearest signal dealer and tell him you want to fill out an application blank for a signal credit card. And now back to the whistler. It was made to order, Matt. This opportunity thrust in your hands when Charlie suddenly decided to leave secretly on the six o'clock southbound. He left you free to kill Wilk without fear of the consequences. To once again look on Robertson Ranch as yours. Only a few minutes after your call to the sheriff's office, he's there with you at the station. And the questions you knew were coming are on his lips. Now, uh, wait a minute, Matt. You, you say you heard Charlie and Wilk arguing in his office. Ran across the yard in time to see Charlie run off after the shot. That's right, Sheriff. Yeah. Uh, when was that? Well, let's see, about, uh... About an hour ago, I think. Uh, what were you doing just before that? Well, I I came in kind of tired and laid down for a few minutes. When was that? This afternoon. What's the matter with that? Oh, just beginning to wonder, Matt. You, uh, you really wanted Wilkes' share of the ranch back, didn't you? That's got nothing to do with it. Charlie's on that train. You better send somebody. I already did. Dorothy's on her way now. She wants him back. Dorothy? What is all this? Well, that man's a killer. He's... Wait a minute, Matt. Charlie couldn't have done it. He was 200 miles from here when it happened. What do you mean? What? Charlie got on the 6 o'clock train tonight. Ask the agent. Tonight? You know, Matt, you were mighty clever. But you shouldn't have laid down on that bed tired the way you were. That was a big mistake, Matt. What? I, I don't know what you're talking Take about. Take a look out that window there. The east window. Huh? You see that funny light out there? That's dawn coming up, Matt. You forgot. This is the dead of winter, and the nights are long. It's six o'clock in the morning now. What? what? Morning? Sure. You stretched out on that bed yesterday evening, passed out like a baby, and didn't open your eyes for more than 12 hours. 12, 12 hours? I, I slept the clock around. Yeah. Now, let's go up to my office and wrap this up. All nice and formal. Let that whistle be your signal for the signal oil program, The Whistler. Each Wednesday night at this same time, brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of signal gasoline and motor oil and fine quality automotive accessories. Signal has asked me to remind you to get the most driving pleasure, drive at sensible speeds, be courteous, and obey traffic regulations. It may save a life, possibly your own. Featured in tonight's story were Bill Boucher and David Ellis. The Whistler was produced by George W. Allen with story by Joel Malone and Harold Swanton and music by Wilbur Hatch and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. Next Wednesday, for a full hour of mystery over most of these stations, tune in a half hour earlier. Enjoy The Saint as well as The Whistler. This is Marvin Miller speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.